What in the Tolstoy works of classic literature is going on right now? We are currently experiencing here in the US one of the largest outbreaks of tuberculosis in Kansas City. Yeah, you heard it, tuberculosis, that disease that you read about in classic literature where they're always talking about he's got the consumption because it literally is as if you have been consumed from within by this infection. It was once the leading cause of death in the United States in the early 20th century, referred to as the white white plague because people were so sick with this, they become very pale and hence the name, the white plague. Fortunately, through the advancement of medicine, we were able to make tuberculosis pretty uncommon. We still have outbreaks from time to time. It's not as though it's impossible, but here we have this large outbreak in Kansas City and it is a highly searched topic right now because people are freaking out. Tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria called mycobacterium. People who have symptoms of tuberculosis can release bacteria when they talk or cough. It is highly contagious if the person has symptoms. Now, tuberculosis infection can happen in one of two ways. The active infection, which is what you read about in books, right? Fever, night sweats, weight loss, being really ill with consumption, coughing up blood. But then there's the latent form where the bacteria remains dormant in your body, hibernating. You don't have any symptoms. You're perfectly fine. And I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pause. Pause the minivan there because what are you doing? You're a dermatologist. You're not a pulmonologist. You're not an ID doc, infectious disease. What are you doing coming on here talking about tuberculosis? Well, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who tune into the vids on a regular basis, you already know the line because I've been feeding it to you now for over eight years. And what is the line? What is the line? The skin is a window to what is going on internally. And you guessed it, tuberculosis, the consumption can impact the skin. There are skin signs. There are warning signs that you've got tuberculosis and that's what we're going to talk about today. So tuberculosis can impact the skin by one of three ways. First is the bacteria can actually be directly inoculated into your skin through a cut, skin injury, a procedure that you've had. You also can have tuberculosis spread throughout your bloodstream and creep on out to the skin in a disseminated fashion. Third, you can have extension of tuberculosis from a underlying lymph node or bone where the tuberculosis is brewing. It just extends all the way through, breaks right through to the skin. Who is at risk for getting tuberculosis? Is it something that you're just gonna pick up walking the dog outside or watching Netflix on the couch? Probably not. People who are at risk are those who live in close contact with someone with active tuberculosis, not latent, active, like they're coughing, releasing the bacteria, especially if you happen to live like in close quarters maybe a nursing home, a healthcare facility, a dorm, barracks. That's a situation where tuberculosis outbreak can be more of a pressing issue if there's an active case going on. Also, people who work in healthcare. People who work in healthcare are more likely to be exposed. Tuberculosis isn't that common in the United States anymore, but it is still a really active ongoing issue in many other countries. So if you visit those countries and you're around somebody who has active disease, you're at risk. While tuberculosis is very contagious, not not everyone who is exposed to someone who has symptoms will actually get tuberculosis. It's thought that part of why you might get it has to do with, guess what? Guess what? You can blame all of life's problems on anything you don't like about yourself. Anything that goes wrong with your body, just point your finger to mom and dad. Your genetics likely play a role in whether or not you experience full-blown active tuberculosis. All right, getting into the skin signs. There are a variety of different skin bumps, lumps, etc., that happen or can happen, I should say, with tuberculosis. And a big factor in how the skin responds, or if it responds at all, has a lot to do with your immune system. And if you have ever been exposed to tuberculosis before, for example, a lot of people in countries where tuberculosis is an ongoing problem may have received the BCG vaccine. So their immune system is going to respond a lot more aggressively to the presence of the bacteria. People who have a really weak, fragile immune system they have underlying immunosuppression or people who take medication
medications that suppress or alter their immune responses. For example, medications known as biologics that alter certain arms of the immune system. For many of these medications, your doctor will check to make sure you don't have latent tuberculosis incubating in your body because going on one of these medications could cause it to wake up and for you to have a full-blown active infection. Let's get into primary cutaneous tuberculosis, getting inoculated into the skin through skin injury, trauma, procedures, piercings, tattoos, microneedling, resurfacing laser, or trauma. Anything that punctures the skin has that opportunity. Most commonly gonna happen on the face, the hands, and the legs. And you develop what's called a tuberculous chancre. This bump appears anywhere from one to four weeks after it was introduced into your skin. So it doesn't just pop up there a few hours or the day after you got a penetrating injury. It starts out as a painless raised bump and then eventually develops into an ulcer that is not symptomatic, not tender. The ulcer is very shallow and the edges are undermined. You might actually have a multiple going up a path following along lymphatic drainage along with a swollen lymph node. That pattern of spread is known as sporotrichoid and there are a lot of things that can do that. This is one example. Now if somebody who has been exposed to tuberculosis before has had the BCG vaccine they may respond differently to inoculation of the bacteria into the skin with something known as lupus vulgaris. Now, to be clear, it's called lupus vulgaris, but it's not the same thing at all as the autoimmune disease lupus. Systemic lupus erythematosus and lupus vulgaris, not the same thing. As a side note, I have a video all about the skin signs of systemic lupus erythematosus. Check that out. But to be clear, we call a lot of different things lupus that are totally different from that. Lupus vulgaris is a form of cutaneous tuberculosis that is basically a re-inoculation into the skin. So their immune system reacts a little bit differently than just a bump that ulcerates. They get this sort of infiltrated plaque that starts out small and slowly over time enlarges. Lupus vulgaris typically will heal with a scar in one area and then become active in an adjacent area. So it's kind of always evolving. And as you can imagine, it because it's scarring, it can become quite disfiguring. This is something that in areas of the world where tuberculosis is more common, you might see cases of this, especially in young children, often on the lower extremities, like the thigh, the lower leg, and the gluteal region, the buttocks. Then you have what's called warty tuberculosis, or a prosector's wart, named because pathologists doing autopsies may have developed these by doing the autopsies and being exposed to tuberculosis bacteria through the autopsies. So that's the name, prosector's wart. It looks like this warty mass and it is inoculation of the bacteria into the skin of someone who has been exposed to the bacterial infection before. This presentation is gonna happen in someone who has really good immunity against the bacteria. Most common gonna be on the hands. It also can happen on the knees, the elbows, the feet. Then you have the orificial presentation. Orificial as in around orifices. The orificial presentation is secondary to having advanced disease. Like you're ill with this and the bacteria is extending into the mucocutaneous junctions like around the mouth, around the nose, around the eyes. Then you have what's referred to as miliary tuberculosis. Miliary because it looks like little bumps all over the skin in a disseminated fashion about the size of a millet grain. If you've ever seen millet, it's kind of small and you have these like firm reddish pink brown little tiny bumps that can ulcerate. This happens as a result of hematogenous meaning from the blood spread. You are really ill with tuberculosis. You feel really sick and it is a very poor prognosis if not treated. You likely can go on to die if you have this presentation. A more focal version of that hematogenous spread from the, the blood up to the skin is a tuberculosis abscess can form as well, like a boil that causes the overlying skin to break down. You can have the formation of a sinus tract, a fistula. You guessed it, it can kind of look like hydradenitis superativa. Now, if you have HS, don't freak out and think you have tuberculosis. These are all really rare, but given that we're in the midst of one of the larger outbreaks we have seen in the US, it's definitely worth knowing about and talking about. Then you have scrofula derma. This is tuberculosis that gets into the 
skin via extension from an underlying sort of nidus of tuberculosis, like a lymph node commonly, or bone. This occurs in association with pulmonary tuberculosis. Like if you're latent, this is not happening. It ulcerates. Interesting thing about this presentation is that it actually might heal in some rare cases by itself without any treatment. All right, y'all, those are the skin signs of tuberculosis caused by a bacteria. It's a sneaky little specimen. We have antibiotics that treat it. It's a rather involved treatment protocol. And again, it kind of depends on what you have going on. Worth knowing about in the setting of this large outbreak and also worth knowing about because as I've said, not everything is what you think it is. There are certain lumps and bumps that you might believe are X, Y, and Z, but there's a whole host of other possible things that it can be. And while this is not like a super common thing, all right, you're not likely to come across somebody on TikTok selling a serum that's meant to address this. Um, it does happen. It does happen and, and knowing about it is half the battle. All right, y'all. Speaking of the what uh, shouldn't be common, but is popping up and we're seeing more and more of it is measles. Yes, measles uh, can be quite deadly and we're seeing a lot more cases of measles. So on the end slate, I'm going to put my video all about the rash of measles its presentation, the timeline of events not to miss. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.